Hello, this is Coach Rod, official trainer for 2020 Sports. This is going to be the third installment of my shooting instructional videos. The first video we went into was about shooting and learning to use your legs. The second video taught you how to pay attention to certain details when you're shooting. This one right here is going to teach you exactly where to put the basketball, exactly where it needs to be in order to become an efficient shooter. Let's go. This is a shooting technique I developed uh, some time ago uh, to go along with my video instruction. This uh, represents the height that you need to shoot the basketball, the distance that you need to shoot the basketball, and the benefits of following this technique rather than just tossing the, tossing the ball up there and just gunning it or, or just chucking the basketball. So hopefully this will serve as the, uh, the icing on the cake as far as the uh, shooting instruction that I've tried to give you. First thing I want to do is point out some very important points on here before we get into it. Now try not to make this video too long. We've got your maximum height, which is the maximum height that you have to shoot the basketball. You've got to get it some height. Height is going to be better for you than distance. It's going to be more important to you than distance, okay? And there's a certain point where you have to shoot it, okay? There's a drop zone where the basketball falls to the falls into the rim. There are in there are this is the point showing how far you have to shoot it. Then there are examples of the distance that you can save shooting this way, whether you're at the free throw line, mid range, or three pointer. Okay. One thing you need to understand when it comes to shooting is that you control shooting the ball up. When you're shooting the basketball, you have a couple of different zones. You have your shooting zone, which is where the, the shooting takes place, and then you have your drop zone. It is up to you to get the ball here. Okay? You control the up. You're down here. You're going to control the ball going up. You use your legs and your shooting wrist to get the ball up with the correct timing. Okay, Once you get the ball up, when it starts falling down, you're done with the shot. When you get the ball right here, your shooting is over with. That shot is over with. You've done all you can do. Okay, Gravity controls the down. This drop zone is, is, a, is five feet. The ball at the right height can fall for five feet because you have created a forward momentum and you have gotten it this far because of the height when it starts to come down it will fall into the rim the most accurate shooters shoot with this in mind okay so how do we get there well first of all you need something to let you know exactly where to put the basketball okay you've got some cheat sheets that exist on every basketball court the first one is the height of the backboard, okay? The, the height of the backboard is 13 feet. And I say your maximum height is 13 to 14 feet. So as you're shooting, as the ball is coming out of your hand, it is already on its way to that 13 to 14 foot maximum height line, okay? You're basically shooting to reach the height of the backboard. Every time you shoot, you are shooting to reach the height of the backboard, okay? And just visually to let you know how far you're shooting the basketball because with this technique I'm showing you how to take five feet off of every shot that you can take. There's only three shots you're going to take as far as jump shooting goes. It's going to be a free throw, mid-range, and your three-pointer. So the free throw is 15 feet. We're going to take five feet off of that and make it 10 feet. So you don't have to shoot the ball 10 feet. For mid-range, so we're going to back up a couple feet, for, make it 17 feet. You only have to shoot 12. For the three-pointer, we're going to shoot from 20 feet, and you're only going to have to cover 15 feet. Okay? And you notice something. All three of these shots, the free throw, the mid-range, and the three-pointer, when you shoot them, look where they all wind up. You're shooting to get them to the same spot, the same one spot. So the the distance from the from the rim 
is always going to be five feet short of the rim. Okay? It's always going to be five feet short of the rim. And all you have to do with a high release and good jump and follow through timing with your legs and your wrists is get the ball here. All you got to do is get the ball here. 13 feet. It's coming out of your hands. It's, it's rising to 13 feet. That's all you're trying to do is shoot to reach the height of the basket. Do not shoot to reach the rim because if you shoot to reach the rim, what's going to happen is you're going to target the back of the rim or if you're on the side of the, on the, in the corner, you're going to target the far side of the rim and it's either going to go in very, very hard or it's going to bounce either over the rim or back at you. If you're in front of the rim, which this illustrates shooting from the top of the key, okay? But the same rules apply whether you're on the wing or in the corner. Uh, what happens is you want to utilize the entire rim. The middle of the rim is where you're trying to get the basketball. That way you get the soft touch and your chances of the basketball going in are much greater. If you do not reach this maximum height, it's going to flatten your shot out. And shots get flattened out when, when players start to use their forearm to push the ball rather than just initiating the shot with their wrist and then finishing it with their legs. You start the shot with your wrist, finish it with the power of your legs. Okay, that's how that works. But remember, you only control the up. So from here is as far as you need to shoot it. But where is that cone? That's the question I know you want me to answer. Where is that cone? That cone is right here. If this is the free throw line, okay, if this were the free throw line, if you're familiar with the paint, there are three notches on each side of the paint. The third notch is five feet from the basket. That's as far as you have to shoot the basketball. So visually, when you're out in the middle of a game, you're not going to be able to look at this um, to really and truly use uh, to measure where you need to get the basketball. But when you are out on the floor and you're just trying to get a, a good idea of how far you have to shoot the basketball, go out there and look at, look at the paint. Look at the paint. Those three notches right there. That's as far as you have to shoot the basketball. When you're in the corner, you just have to get it to the side of the paint. Okay? Side of the paint. That's as far as you have to shoot it. Okay? When you are on the wing, we're talking about this third line. From the wing and then from the corner, you're getting it to the side of the paint. So that covers, that covers you all the way around the floor. Okay, from the top of the key, that's where you got to get it. From the wing, you're talking about that third line. From the corner, you're talking about the sides of the paint. So when you're just trying to visualize where you have to get the basketball, those are the things that are great to know. Those are the things that are great to focus on when you're th thinking about distance. But above all, you always shoot to reach the height of the backboard. You never shoot to reach the rim because if you shoot the rim, you're going to shoot a flat shot. Okay? You always shoot to reach the height of the backboard. Now, and like I said, once you get it here, five, the ball can fall for five feet as long as you shoot it and get the ball to the right height. The ball will fall for five feet, okay? Because gravity pulls the ball down. There's no way you're going to control this and this, okay? You don't control the ball coming down. You control the ball coming up. Gravity controls the ball on the way down. And believe it or not, that's pretty much it. You know, this is this will serve as a great resource for you. Um, if you want to go back and watch this, you can watch it tons and tons of times to remind you of of where you're supposed to be putting the basketball because ball placement is really and truly a mental thing and if you if you understand it mentally then shooting won't be so hard for you so let me go back over it really quick and then we'll be done okay as far as where you need to shoot the basketball if you were out front you would you can look and see that the third set of lines here is how far you need to shoot the basketball if you're on the in, from the in the corner then you're shooting it to the side of the paint, the sideline of the paint, okay? If you're shooting it from the wing, you're going to be shooting it to reach this line right here, okay? That's just for visual purposes only. Now, as far as where you need to shoot the basketball every time as far as your wrist and your legs go, you always shoot to reach the height of the backboard. 
I mean, the backboard is the same height in every gym you play in. So if you look at it, you should never have a bad shooting night. If your mechanics are right and you're putting the basketball where you're supposed to be, you won't have a bad shooting night whether you're at home or on the road because you're shooting to reach the height of the backboard, which is 13 feet, 14. Most, most time I shoot at 14 feet because I shoot a little bit higher than normal, okay? Because I, I, I can generate so much power with my legs. So I wind up shooting at about 14 feet. But you always shoot from, from the time the ball is leaving your hand, you're shooting to reach maximum height, which is the height of the backboard. If you get it there with your high release and using your legs and your jump timing, if they're right, just shooting, that, the, just shooting the basketball with the right timing and the right release, the ball will automatically get here. Okay, It will get here and then it will start falling and it will go in. And sometimes you just got to fine tune it and make sure you did everything right. A lot of times when the ball doesn't get here, 99% of the time you didn't have your hips down and you didn't get all of your power on your shot. Okay. Drop zone is five feet from that third set of lines over. If you're in the corner from the side of the paint over. That's, that's as far as you need to shoot it. If you're out on the wing, then you need to shoot it to that third set of lines. I mean, it's, it's really and truly that simple. You know, your free throw is 15 feet. You'll only shoot 10 feet. Your mid-range shot, if it's a 17-footer, you'll only shoot 12. And guess what? A three-pointer, if it's 20 feet, you only shoot 15 feet. Well, that's shooting a free throw. Same as shooting a free throw, okay? I tell people all the time, when I shoot a three-pointer, it's like shooting a free throw. They laugh at me, but... Technically, it is because I'm taking five feet off of a 20-foot shot. So, it's, to me, it's, it's shooting a free throw. That's why three-pointers are so easy for me to hit. And, uh, guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope that you uh, got something out of this. If it doesn't make sense to you, watch it over and over and over again. Just keep coming back and watching it, and it will make sense. Go out and shoot and keep this in mind when you're shooting, and, and I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you're going to become a better shooter ahead of schedule. You're going to become a better shooter in record time because this right here teaches you that you only have to get the ball to one spot. You don't change your shot form up regardless of whether you're shooting a free throw, mid-range, or three-pointer. You do not change where you shoot the basketball or how you shoot the basketball. You're always trying to get it to reach the height of the backboard every single shot. If you do that, you should have no problems whatsoever. Once again, this is Coach Mosby, official trainer for 2020 Sports. See you later.